Yo, what's up guys, in this video we're going to be doing an exploration guide for 7.1.1, or the first quest. So, just to start it off, um, there are six paths, and I label them one through six, like this is one, this is two, this is three, and then four, five, six, all the way around. So, let's start off with path number one. This is a very easy path, it's just masochism, double down, and power focus too. Double down doesn't really help that much. Uh, it's more just like they gain a lot of power and then masochism Basically the way this node works is they get a lot of power while they're below two bars of power But then once they're above it, um, they really just don't gain power at all. So they're gonna get into their special twos a lot And you know and they also have masochism, but when you look at these fights, um None of them are really problem fights So I'm not gonna really go over any of these because it's just masochism to play around and pretty basic easy characters to fight like nebula Luke Cage, Vision, Ghost Rider, Ultron. So, I'm just going to talk about the boss. So this boss is Black Widow, Clairvoyant, and Footloose. Uh, Juke, Prey and the Weak, all special attacks are unblockable. Basically, um, you don't really want to use a robot for this because if um, they get a bleed debuff, they'll get an incinerate instead. So you don't really want to bring a robot into this. But you don't really need to because Black Widow Clairvoyance bleeds are so weak, you can pretty much use any character. Only node you really have to worry about is Footloose. So every time they activate a special attack, the defender becomes unstoppable and, and um, has an evade charge for 25 for, uh, for 7 seconds. So right on the third special, they'll have an evade and a unstoppable. So basically all you got to do for this is um, you could just wait it out, really. Um, that's pretty much all you could, I mean you could wait it out or you could use a character like Captain America Infinity War and just parry heavy get rid of her unblockable but honestly at the end of the day this fight doesn't need a counter you can bring in any character and one shot it you just got to make sure that once there's a special attack you just wait out the seven seconds but if you are too impatient you could just use someone like Captain Infinity War Stealth Suit Spider-Man She-Hulk so I'm gonna get rid of it so um, She-Hulk's a really good counter too because of the her slow counters the unstoppable and evade charge but really at the end of the day um it's really just an easy fight so this first path is really easy not much to it second path is a little bit more fun uh also this is the team i used for this first path so for the second path um it is flare oh wait can i click on it it is flare and colorblind basically colorblind don't bring the same class type bring you gotta bring five different class characters then Flare, the opponent gains 300% attack, so you do crazy damage, but they take 100% of their health over 60 seconds. So, um, basically, you just want to bring characters that can do damage very quickly to get rid of the, because they get killed the fights fast. Um, a really good counter for this is um, Ghost and Hood synergy, because when she phases backwards, um, she doesn't take any damage. Uh, Corvus is really good for this. I used Corvus for this fight. Um, Corvus, even without the charge, is just insane. If you have a Corvus, he can do like 20, 30k crits, and he just kills these fights so quickly. Um, another fun character you can bring in is Namor, um, as your mutant character, because he'll be getting crazy attack, like he's an Imperius Rex, but you can just reflect all the flare damage back to them. So yeah, this is a pretty easy path. You just gotta bring some crazy high damage output character, and they, it really just makes quick work of it. Then we're going to go over the second boss. Um, this one has super masochism. So every five seconds, the next stun, bleed, poison, shock, incinerate, cold snap, or rupture debuff triggered by the defender is immediately purified and applied to the attacker. So don't really bring um, debuffs. And then uh, don't bring debuff characters, really. And then each time this effect triggers, they'll also generate 5% of their health. So basically, um... Don't bring debuff characters for this fight, and you gotta intercept. Don't use stuns. Um, and then feats of power, uh, nothing node, rich get richer. Um, whichever champion is more unique buffs gains five percent of a bar of power every second. So if you're being like Venom, um, it'll be a nice power booster. But then again, Venom's probably bad for this fight, so ignore this node too. And then foresight, um, intercepting their intercepting them basically gives you a t fury for two hundred percent over five seconds. So, the best character for this fight is just Ghost. You can just Ghost intercept this dude, and Ghost intercept him, and just keep getting that Fury over and over again. Ghost doesn't need to rely on stuns or any debuffs. So, Ghost is the best for this fight. Um, you can use really any character for this fight as long as they don't have debuffs, and as long as you can intercept it, the damage is just pretty nice. 
like like Wasp for example I mean I don't really think of her as like a boss killer but like she can do this fight pretty easily um, she doesn't have any debuffs so that's pretty much all you gotta worry about just don't put debuffs and you should be good now on path 3 I found this path pretty fun it was can't stop won't stop mixed with uh, flight or flight or fight or flight and muscle wizard can't stop won't stop is um, the duration of your unstoppable effects are increased by 100% so they're um, a lot longer but they also take the defender doesn't take damage unless it, does, it doesn't take a lot of damage, really, unless you have a um, unstoppable. The no-down itself is kind of a pain, but mixed with these two, it's pretty easy. Uh, every 12 seconds, the defender gains an unstoppable for 4 seconds. If the attacker is far away when this triggers, the attacker gains it instead. So you can really use any character in the game and still get the unstoppable. It says 4 seconds, but mixed with the can't stop, won't stop, it's 8 seconds. And then, if you don't want to do that tactic, um, you can use Muscle Wizard, which is even more OP. Um, whenever a mystic attacker knocks down the dude, um, you gain a 100% chance to get an unstoppable for 6 seconds, but it's times 2, so it's 12, I believe. Um, and if you already have an unstoppable, they gain an indefinite fury buff, increasing attack by 50%. So you can gain 4 this way. So say you use Doom, you know, you slap him on the floor 4 times, you have a 200% attack boost the rest of the fight, and you're pretty much always unstoppable. Um, so yeah, th this quest is, this path is really easy. You can bring in pretty much any character in the game with their fight or flight node. Um, but if you want to cheese it a lot faster, Clairvoyant, Doom, the good Mystics, just keep knocking them down. It's really easy. Um, there's no really trouble fights on this path. All the fights are easy, and then it's the same Yondu boss. So yeah, bring a counter um, to this fight. Also, to keep in mind, um, with these things, you can change out a character for a new one. So that's pretty fun um, at the end of the quest. Now we're going to path four, Pleasure to Burn, God of Light, and Mighty Charge. Um... So basically, Mighty Charge 1, so it's not like the Unstoppable 1, but it's while they perform a medium dash, um, they purify all your debuffs, so it's kind of annoying. And then, got a Light, both the attacker and defender strikes have a 20% chance to apply an Incinerate, um, dealing 0.5% energy damage over 10 seconds. And then Pleasure to Burn, um, your Incinerates do more damage, but the enemy takes no damage unless they have um, Incinerates on them. So you can theoretically bring in any character to this fight, and then with this node, God of Light, you got a 20% chance of all your hits to put an incinerate on them. So that's your damage phase. Um, it's really not, like not a hard fight, uh, uh, what's it called, path. One thing that's kind of annoying is when they charge at you, um, they get rid of all the incinerate, so it can be a little bit slower. But it's not hard per se, any character in the game can do it. Literally any character, there's no hard fights in the path too. So easy path. And then you got this Black Widow Deadly Origin. She has bullet time, stun vulnerability, tenacity, and enhanced shock. So, tenacity, so if she has a debuff, she has a 75% chance to purify it. So don't rely on debuff characters to get you through this fight. Um, shock, just her shocks do more damage. And then these two nodes together, bullet time and stun vulnerability. You'd think with stun vulnerability, it'd be really good. But, um, uh, but with bullet time, anytime the defender is stunned, they immediately remove the stun and gain an evade charge, which grants 100% chance to evade the next hit. Each time a hit is evaded, one evade charge is removed. Um, if the attacker avoids um, her attack using dexterity, all evade charges are removed, and they're passively stunned for 1.5 seconds. So basically the way that this works is you can parry, it'll put an evade charge on them, it won't stun them. They'll have the evade charge, they'll charge at you, and if you dexterity at the right time, it'll stun her, get rid of the charge, and for 1.5 seconds she'll be stunned, and with stun vulnerability it'll do a little bit more damage. So the fight um, can really be done once again with any character. Um, just watch out because her animations are kind of crazy. And um, it's Black Widow Deadly Origin, so if she hits you, she's pretty much just going to clap you with the um, shocks. I found Doom really good for this fight because if you slip up at all, I mean, he's shock immune. So it's fun. So yeah, really easy path once again. Now we got path number five. Turtling, Chitness Thorns, Cosmic Fracture, Cutting Wires. Okay, this path is if you have Magneto, pretty much just a Magneto path. Basically the way it works is, um, so Turtling is if you have an Atlanta attack in six seconds, they gain an armor up buff. Chitinous Thorns is if the defender has an armor up buff, the attacker is inflicted with a bleed, dealing um, the defender's attack over five seconds each time you hit them. So what you wanna do is make sure they don't have armor ups on them so you can't get bled but unless you're using a character like Magneto who doesn't care. 
Cosmic Fracture, Cosmic Attackers, Light Attacks have a 50% chance to armor break the defender. Um, so basically, if you're using Hyperion and you hit him with your Light Attack, um, you have a 50% chance to put an armor break so you don't get bled. Then whenever a robotic attacker would gain a bleed, they gain, they gain a shock. I wouldn't bring a robot for this. My team that I brought was Magneto, Medusa, Ghost, Doom, Nick Fury. You can just Magneto this fight, okay? Because, um, you know, with Chitna Storms, it doesn't matter. Or like Omega Red or, you know, Colossus. It's pretty much, there's a lot of easy fights. Um, Magneto this fight because he's also metal. Magneto this fight because he's also metal. This fight I used Medusa. She worked really well for because she just starts the fight and she just instantly is ar permanently armor breaking the Emma Frost. Also with this node, um, the light attack one, Cosmic Fracture. Um, it's actually pretty fun because you can stack multiple armor shatters with Medusa. I was getting three or four armor shatters. So my damage was just crazy with Medusa. So Medusa is really good for this path. Um, you can just once again Magneto this fight. Um, don't Magneto this fight if you're running suicides. Because once you get that bleed on you from Chitna's Thorns, it's going to change the poison into a Neurotoxin. So don't use Magneto for this fight, if even though if he's metal. Unless you have um, Suicides off, then you can do it fine. And then the same boss once again, so same counters, like I said. And then finally, Path 6, Oscillate and Invade and Kinetic in Instigator. Um, so basically, with Invade... Oscillate is just annoying every 15 seconds. They are very aggressive or very defensive basically um, Invade is both champions have 100% block penetration. So you damn you hit when you hit them through block um, It'll do just full damage what it normally would do but um, And they have a 300% increased attack when hitting block. So basically hitting them in the block is three times better than hitting them normally so and also when you hit them in your block you gain power so basically what you want to do is Use Corvus and just hit their block. It's pretty fun. Use Aegon, hit their block. But the one thing I will say is they also have this node on them. So you really do not want to parry at all. Plus, Oscillate, they have more attack. You parry, you're going to take a massive amount of damage through your block. It's basically like taking three times the damage to the face if you get blocked. So don't do that. You just got to intercept a lot. Um, pretty much, uh, Ghost and Corvus works well for every fight except for this guy. Um, if you got like any mystic character, just bring this, bring any mystic character just for this fight, basically. Bring any good character for this fight. Um, you can use Corvus for pretty much every fight except this one. Or Ghost for every fight once again. If you don't have to do the invade strategy if you don't want. Um, with Ghost, but it's, um, with Corvus it's nice because he crits through block. But for this guy, definitely bring a, um, mystic just to deal with this one fight. Any like, clairvoyant, symbiote supreme, doom, just... Full health to be easily one shot this guy as long as you don't like really choke. The rest of these fights aren't a problem, and then it's the same Black Widow Clay White and Boss we talked about earlier. So yeah, that is quest one fully done. I would say there are no problem paths really. This is a very easy quest. Um this is probably the hardest boss over here. This is a very easy quest though. I don't think anyone should struggle with this. I did this fully itemless. Also, my my um exploration guide is pretty good considering that I did all of Act 7.1 fully itemless so I know the best counters and shit so it's really easy this quest is really easy this is not a problem quest so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video for a like comment subscribe and yeah see you guys in the next one peace